Hello, my name is Arthur and I would like to demonstrate to you a simple example how to create and debug an application on dual core STM32 WL55 devices and usage of hardware semaphores. Within this session I will create a dual core project for STM32 WL55 MCU using STM32 KPIDE and uh, I will demonstrate how to assign peripherals to both cores. In our case it would be USART2 and Hardware Semaphore. Then uh, I will select, configure and use Hardware Semaphores within the code. And using stm 32 cube IDE we will monitor peripherals within a debug session on two cores. As an illustration, as a terminal we will use a built-in terminal within stm 32 cube IDE. What are the prerequisites for this session? I would use Nucleo WL55JC2 board, micro USB cable to connect this board to PC, and PC uh, with pre installed the following software STM32 Cube IDE, I would use version 1.6.1, .1, but uh, this project can work as well on minimum 1.5.0, then STM32 Cube library for STM32 and WL devices in version 1.0.0 or a more recent one. Hardware Semaphore's implementation within STM32 WL and its libraries. Let's uh, start with some main points concerning Hardware Semaphore's uh, implementation in STM32 WL microcontrollers. This peripheral is uh, existing within dual core and single core STM32WL devices. Uh, it allows you to communicate between cores and uh, within one core between different processes. We can find 16 hardware semaphores in STM32WL devices. Each semaphore stores an information about the core and process which took it. Took means lock, in fact. And uh, if a semaphore is not taken, uh, its uh, status registers are cleared. Uh, we've got two main registers for each uh, semaphore. It is HCEM underscore RLRX and uh, a similar RX register. Semaphores uh, can be used, as I told already, within single core or between cores to synchronize. Uh, the actions, the processes. A semaphore can be locked uh, when it is free, it is not taken by any process nor core, and it's uh, brought uh, PROCID field is cleared within its configuration. After the reset, semaphores are enabled by default, and uh, those are available for both cores, but access to them can be separately disabled for each of the core, so it is up to the programmer to limit this access. There is a single interrupt for hardware semaphores which can be triggered by select semaphores once the semaphore is unlocked. Let's have a look on hardware semaphore registers. It's an extract from reference manual RM0453. Uh, so the main registers uh, assigned to each semaphore are uh, hardware semaphore register uh, semaphore X and hardware semaphore read lock register semaphore X. Uh, the first one uh, where we have uh, read write access is used in the so called dual step locking mechanism uh, where we need to uh, put uh, information about the uh, process ID. The core ID uh, is uh, filled automatically uh, depend on the on the core which is calling uh, the locking function and uh, in the second uh, step uh, this register is read back and uh, the values are compared in case uh, the core id and process id are the same like previously written the semaphore is locked uh, for a given core and uh, let's say set uh, process id the second register, which is read-only one, it's a bit more tricky one. It is used uh, for single-step uh, locking mechanism for hardware semaphores. It is used in such a way that uh, 
uh, we are calling the function by reading this content of this register and if this register is empty um, so in fact uh, the, the semaphore is not locked uh, for say any of, of the of the cores and processes so log core id and process id are zeroed in this case uh, the core id is filled automatically by the core id of the of the core which is calling the this uh, log function process id remains cleared and log id is set to one and uh, as a result of this function the semaphore will be taken as well, but in this case, the process ID would be uh, set to zero. So this is the difference between those two registers. One more point on this slide, uh, the core ID is set automatically. So as we can see, zero means uh, the, the semaphore is not taken, four means that it's uh, taken by Cortex-M4 core, and eight, it means that it's taken by Cortex-M0 plus core. Log bit means that uh, once it's cleared, the semaphore is free, and if it's uh, set to one, it means that semaphore is taken. Uh, concerning process ID, uh, this is completely dependent on the user. It is eight bit value, which can be selected from zero up to FF hexadecimal, and it fully depends on the on the user. It is worth to mention that it's possible to release all semaphores assigned to selected core at once. To do this we need to specify 16-bit value, so-called key. Uh, it is done within hardware semaphore key register. This register is common for both cores, in fact. And then, once we access the hardware semaphore clear register with uh, the same key value, all of the semaphores uh, locked uh, by the core which uh, is, uh, let's say, accessing this clear register, will be released automatically at once. Let's have a closer look on the functions, uh, which are defined within hardware abstraction layer of STM32WL, dedicated for hardware semaphores. All of them we will find within this uh, hardware semaphore.c file. First two uh, functions, so hardware semaphore take and fast take, are used to take or lock the semaphore. The first one is used if we would like to specify an additional argument called process ID, which is a 16-bit value. It is giving us an option to lock more than one semaphores by different processes, so different tasks, for example. If we are not planning to specify different tasks, we can use just fast take uh, function and in this case the process id will be filled with a zero value and the only uh, identity of the owner of the semaphore will be stored within the core id uh, of the caller of this function we can check whether the semaphore is taken uh, by using hardware semaphore is sem taken function where we need to specify the semaphore id we've got two dedicated functions to release the semaphore. The first one needs two arguments, semaphore ID and the process ID, and the semaphore will be unlocked only if semaphore ID, process ID, and core ID of the caller of this function will be equal to the values stored within a selected semaphore register. Otherwise, the semaphore will be uh, still locked. Uh, there is a function which allows us to release all semaphores assigned to the given core. To do this, uh, we need to specify the key value, which uh, needs to be specified later on within the key register, which is common for both cores. This we can specify using function set clear key, which we can see below. So once we call this release all function with the proper key value, all of the semaphores which are assigned to the core ID uh, equal to the caller of this function will be released automatically. We can as well read out the key which is uh, stored within the key register using this get clear key um, uh, value. It is possible as well to use the interrupts which would inform us about uh, releasing the semaphores 
uh, to do this uh, we need to uh, use uh, activate notification function which is specifying the semaphore mask uh, so it is we are selecting in fact the semaphores which would generate an interrupt once uh, those semaphores would be released we can as well do the opposite action so we can deactivate those notifications using the activate notification function uh, semaphores can generate the interrupt we can see this hardware semaphore IRQ handler which is common for all of the hardware semaphores and within this function there is after let's say the, the clearing of the flags operations which is done automatically by the hardware abstraction layer uh, there is a free callback function which can be used by us um, to our purposes so in case of clearing or releasing some semaphore we can specify some special action here in the frame you can see the the valid uh, values for the arguments which are used within those functions so semaphore id uh, it is a number from 0 to 31 within the valid range for the given micro the process id uh, theoretically uh, it is from 0 to 255 so it's 8 8-bit uh, eight uh, process ID uh, then core ID is uh, specified uh, by hardware as following so 4 is for Cortex-M4 and 8 is for Cortex-M0 plus uh, key is 16-bit uh, value from 0 to FF FF hexadecimal and set mask uh, is as well 16-bit uh, a value from 0 to FF, FF hexadecimal. On previous slide we have uh, looked uh, on the list of the functions which are available for hardware semaphores. Now let's have a look how we can take lock the semaphore using those hardware abstraction layer uh, functions. We've got two options. Mm, the first one could be used uh, in the system where we've got more than one uh, process. Uh, so, for example, when we are working with operating system. This uh, function is how hardware semaphore take and it needs, uh, in fact, two arguments. The first argument is uh, semaphore ID and the second argument is process ID. This process ID, it's 8-bit value, which is specified uh, by the user and uh, it allows us to use uh, different lock mechanisms depending on number of the of the threads of the tasks of the processes uh, which are managed by the single core if uh, we would like uh, to use the hardware semaphore without operating system we can use this hardware semaphore fast take function which is requiring only one argument which is the semaphore id in both functions uh, the core id is uh, checked automatically um, by the system the core id is taken from the caller of those functions and the proper values are uh, stored within the registers for the given semaphores why we call those uh, components two step and one step in uh, when we are using hardware semaphore take function so the two-step lock we need to program the register for the given semaphore and then read it back and check whether what we just uh, have written is the same what we read and in case the values are the same we are sure that the semaphore is taken uh, as requested in one step lock procedure it is a bit more uh, simple we just uh, read uh, the semaphore which we would like to take and uh, in case it was cleared so it was not taken the system automatically is filling the core id with the core id of the caller of this function and the semaphore is automatically taken by the caller of this hardware semaphore fast take in this case the, the process id uh, will be set to zero so uh, it's much more simple but it is not that uh, flexible like uh, hardware semaphore take thank you for watching this video